Konnichiwa everyone! Recently we just finished the Tohoku train travel winter series so that means another recap and cost video! So this video is here for you guys just so you can kind of have like a ballpark figure if you're wanting to take the same trip that we did in the future. And like the previous recap and cost video, I'm hoping this video will make you consider watching all the episodes if you haven't watched them. And if you have watched them, thank you so, so, so much. I really, really appreciate it. So with that being said, my name is Hannah and this is What You Hannah Do, Tohoku Train Travel, Summary and Expenses. Woo! What You Hannah Do, What You Hannah Do When They Come For You. On day one, we left really early to catch the first train we could get from Shibuya to Takasaki in Gunma. In the last local train travel series, we used the Seishunju Hachikipu to get around, but on this trip, we used the Hokkaido and the Higashi Nihon Pass Futsuresha, or in English, Hokkaido and East Japan Local Trains Pass. These tickets were 11,330 yen for each of us, and it lasts one week. I won't be adding it in daily anymore, I will add this amount at the very end of the trip. When we got to Takasaki, we found out that the local trains were not working due to the heavy snowfall, so we had to cheat and take a Shinkansen from Takasaki to Nagaoka, missing a few stops we wanted to go to. It was okay though, since we kind of knew it might happen on this trip. The Shinkansen from Takasaki to Nagaoka cost us 11,440 yen for the both of us. Although we weren't really expecting this to happen on the very first day of our trip, I really couldn't complain. I love bullet trains, so I considered it a nice kickoff for our trip. Our first stop for the day was Nagaoka. It was pretty early in the day, so we weren't able to do much. We just walked around the city, stumbled upon Hiragata Temple, which was very nice and peaceful, played in the snow like a little child, looked around the station, checked out the products at the station, and then headed for Niigata, our last stop for the day. It was my first time seeing snow from the train like this and it was very beautiful. Oh, we usually have some light snacks and drinks on the trains, but I don't really remember what we bought exactly, so I will just be putting 1000 yen per day for the both of us, since our snacks and drinks would either come from vending machines or convenience stores, so they were not really that expensive. In Niigata, we had our first meal of the day. We went to Bandaijima Seafood Market and decided to go to Minato Shokodo to eat some fried fish since I was craving for that. I had mixed fried seafood and it was extremely yummy. The meal cost us 2,640 yen. Keep in mind that there are two of us in this trip so the price for every big meal is usually for two. After eating, we went to a view deck to see Niigata City from above, which was free. We love a good free activity. Around the view deck was a nice area to walk around in too. We took a bus to the sake brewery because we wanted to take a tour of how sake is made, but the slots were full. Broken hearted, we started making our way back to the hotel and saw a shop that sells miso soft serve ice cream, so I needed to try it. It was weird at first, but I ended up really liking it. Our last activity for the day was to go to Kikizake Bansho, which is a sake tasting station. They have more than a hundred sake you can try in these really cool sake dispensing machines. It cost us 500 yen each. I tried different ones from light, full, easy, complex, to rich. It was quite an interesting experience. I highly recommend it for those who can drink alcohol, of course. Yeah, so that was it for day one. Our hotel that day was adjacent to Niigata Station, which was really convenient and it cost us 9,361 yen. So for day one, we spent a total of 26,293 yen for the both of us. It would have been a lot cheaper without the cheat Shinkansen treat, but things like this happen on trips. Now day two. We left Niigata pretty early that day and headed to Sakata in Yamagata Prefecture. In Sakata, we experienced our first snowfall of the trip. We went to the Sankyo Rice Warehouses, a historical site turned into a souvenir shop and museum. At the Sankyo Warehouses, I also had some Amazake 
and some delicious agemochi. Since Niigata, Yamagata, and Akita are well-known producers of the best rice in Japan, we had to have rice products, right? I loved it! And knowing that Sakata was also once a port city, we had to get some seafood. We went to Komatsu Maguro and had one of the best tuna rice bowls I've ever had in my life. You're gonna hear a lot of best in my life in this video, but that's because it's true. I had some really bomb meals in this trip. After Sakata, we went to Akita. We rode this really cute two-car train and saw some really nice views. It was only the second day of our trip, so I was ecstatic to see all of this snow. Absolutely enjoyed it. In Akita, we first checked in our hotel, which cost us 9,539 yen, and then we went to Senshu Park, which is one of the biggest parks in the area and played in the snow again. What can I say? I'm a big kid. Senshu Park was stunning. It was definitely grand and just overall beautiful. So if you do get the chance to come to Akita, please give this park a visit. So now that we've burned the tuna rice bowl after walking around Senshu Park and playing in the snow, we were ready for dinner. We had some specialty dishes of Akita. We went to Akita Ryori Chawanya and was super grateful that they were able to accommodate us. We had tofu, iburigakko, Japanese sandfish, took a break from eating with some hot nihonshu and some beer, mmm, and then continued eating. We then had maitake stir fry, Japanese smelts, which was surprisingly good, maitake mushroom tempura, and finally some kiritampo nabe, one of Akita's most famous specialties. We wanted to splurge on that meal since we don't really hold back when it comes to food, so that cost us 10,400 yen. It was really worth it though. So for day two, we spent a total of 25,139 yen. Still not bad considering how much food we ate that day. <laughs> Next up, day three, Aomori day. We said goodbye to Akita and headed to Aomori. Once again, we left a little early that day, so we were able to eat a yummy self-heating ekiben on the train. It was my first time experiencing a self-heating bento, so that was cool. I burned myself though, so please be careful if you get to buy one in the future. Anyway, we saw some more super gorgeous views of snowy Japan. Still stunning even though the weather was quite erratic that day. We got to our first stop of the day which was Hirosaki. Hirosaki was beautiful and I loved the vibe. We took a taxi since we hadn't adapted to the snow yet and went to Neputamura to see the Neputa Museum. I'm an artist, so I was in awe of the museum. They had some awesome Neputa floats and art in this museum, and we even got to listen to an award-winning shamisen musician play. After the museum, we fought through the snow to see Hirosaki Castle. We got a little wet because of the snowfall, but I extremely enjoyed it, of course. I always say I'm half polar bear because I love the cold, so yep, I had the time of my life. After seeing Hirosaki Castle, we took a taxi back to the station, and while waiting for a train, had to have some apple pie and apple tea. Aomori is known for their apples, so we had to have apple products, and it was good. It was sad to leave Hirosaki, but we had to keep moving. We went to Aomori City! Check out the trains! It's amazing how they are still able to run with that much snow on them. Anyway, this day was a difficult one for us because we wanted to see so many places, but because it was the last day of the year, a lot of the places were closed. We were very fortunate to have the A Factory open, so we went for a look. A Factory had an apple cider tasting machine, so we had to try it. It was good and refreshing. We tried every single bottle that was available. We wanted to see a little bit more of Aomori City before leaving, so we went to check out Hakodamaru, a humongous transport ship turned museum. Of course, the museum was closed too, but still pretty spectacular from the outside. It was cool knowing that we were at the edge of Honshu, the main island of Japan. It was gnarly to see snow and sea together. 
And I saw these guys too. Cute! Once we got back to the station, I bought an apple juice drink, which was quite sweet, and then left for Hachinohe. There are three major cities in Aomori, Hirosaki, Aomori, and Hachinohe. I was very happy to have been able to visit all three. We got to Hachinohe quite late in the day, so we took a taxi to our hotel, checked in, and then went out to look for an open restaurant. Unfortunately, not a lot were open and the open ones were already fully booked. So we ended up eating in a Japanese fast food joint called Nakao. I had a half gyudon and half oyakodon meal, which was surprisingly good and filling. Not the usual New Year's Eve's dinner, but not bad at all. After that, we just got some junk food from the local convenience store and celebrated the New Year from our hotel room. That's it! For day three, we spent a total of 23,160 yen for two. Happy New Year! Now, on to day four! First day of the year! Everything closed! <laughs> That's what happened this day. Anyway, we chose to have breakfast at the hotel since we knew there might not be a lot open. So when we booked the hotel the day before, we booked it with breakfast. After that, we made our way to Hachinohe Station. We stumbled upon Miyagi Park and saw a nice view of Hachinohe City. We also saw the Hachinohe Castle ruins and then left for Hachinohe Station. We still had some time at the station before the next train would come and since we found an open restaurant, we had to eat some of Hachinohe's specialties, even though we had already had breakfast. I have a big appetite, okay? We had ikameshi, fried squid rings, and senbei jiru, which was a soup with rice crackers in it. Delicious. So we left Aomori Prefecture and headed to Morioka City in Iwate. Morioka was different. Lots of clear spaces, not that many tall buildings. I wanted to try some wanko soba, but like I said, a lot of everything was closed. So we just took a walking tour of the city, saw some Japanese Western fusion type buildings, saw some furry friends, <clears throat> stalked one of them, and got to see Hatsumode. People go to the temples and shrines on the first day of the year to pray. We'll be back, Morioka. I need to challenge myself with some wanko soba. Since there had been some heavy snowfall the day prior, the local trains from Morioka to Sendai were not working. So we had to cheat again, which I was really excited about because I didn't want to spend the whole first day of the year on a train. And from Morioka to Sendai, it would take us a whopping three hours. This Shinkansen would take us only 30 minutes. Plus, I get to relax and eat beef jerky in peace. So yes, we got to Sendai a lot earlier than expected. Sendai is well known for its gyutang or cow beef tongue, so we had to try it, right? I feel like most of this trip has been me eating yummy food, don't you think? But yeah, living life. Living my best life. Anyway, after spending a bit of time looking for an open restaurant, we found Gyutan no Isen. I kid you not, they serve the best Gyutan I've ever had in my life. It was more of a grilled steak type of cow beef tongue dish than the usual thinly sliced cuts sold at the local supermarkets. Soft, yet chewy. Yummy! It was so good! And since we had to burn a bit of it, we walked around Sendai City and we saw a lot of Shotengai, which is basically just a covered local street market. Sendai for me was like a cross between Tokyo and Osaka and one of the more livelier cities we've been to on this trip. It was nice! And after looking around, we headed back to our hotel and called it a day. We weren't able to do much, but it was a good, chill first day of the year. So for day four, we spent a total of 29,988 yen. Oof, that Shinkansen was a little expensive. <sighs> anyway, I thought that Gyutan was the best meal of the trip until day five happened. Day five! Day 5 for me was definitely the highlight of our trip. I loved Aomori in Day 3, 
But this day was something else. From Sendai, we went to Yamadera in Yamagata Prefecture, and boy was it stunning. I could see the little city from the train and my jaw dropped to the floor. Everything was coated in snow, and I can say the video of it is pretty, but not nearly as gorgeous in real life. We climbed up the snowy and icy mountain with much difficulty, but since everything was just so spectacular, I really didn't mind the full body workout. We went up to Godaido and saw the most spectacular view of the Yamadera countryside. I didn't want to leave this place, but the sun was super bright that day that the snow started melting a little bit and staying there would mean it would be even harder for us to go down the mountain safely. We slid down the mountain because there was no other way. And also, <laughs> it was fun. Honestly, I was super scared at first, but when I got the hang of it, well, kind of got the hang of it, I was more relaxed and calm going down the mountain. To reward myself for that feat, I had a mochi-ish jelly popsicle and a Japanese biscuit. I liked it! After my reward, we saw a massive hot pot, and then said goodbye to Yamadera to go to Yamagata City to try their most amazing Yonezawa beef. If you don't know what Yonezawa beef is, think Kobe beef, but from Yamagata. Premium, top-notch Wagyu or Japanese beef. This meal is probably one of the most expensive meals I've ever had and also one of the best meals I've ever had in my life. It was mind-blowing and I don't think I'll ever get over how amazing that meal was. I know it was super expensive, but you gotta have something like that at least once in your life, right? My day had been made after this. I know it sounds a little ridiculous, but I needed some dessert though. So while waiting for a train, I had a seasonal fruits parfait with the best fruits from Yamagata. After that, we took a lot of trains, three in fact, to get to Koriyama in Fukushima. Koriyama was our last stop for the day and we didn't really need to do anything at this point aside from check in our hotel and rest. We did climb a snowy mountain after all. So we said goodnight and that was it for day five. So for day five, we spent a total of 26,640 yen. Woohoo for Yonezawa beef! Last but not least, Gyoza day! I mean day six! We wanted kind of a chill day because it was our last day and we were going home. We originally planned on just going straight home, but we decided to visit Utsunomiya, the city of Gyoza, and eat a lot of Gyoza. We first went to Oyaji Temple to see Peace Cannon, a 27 meter tall statue made out of Oya stone, and as well as the relics in Oyaji Temple. Oyaji Temple also has an 11,000 year old skeleton preserved, which was like, just wow, really amusing. After Oyaji Temple, we were so ready to have some gyoza. Our first gyoza restaurant was more of a traditional one where we had boiled, pan fried, fried, and deep fried gyoza, which was pretty good. Out of the four, I really loved the original pan fried ones. Yummy. The next restaurant we went to was a fancier, more modern restaurant called Bariron. I adored this restaurant. The staff were really energetic and the chefs were so nice. One even showed us how they make their gyoza. Super cute. I had some mala gyoza and coriander gyoza. Honestly, I couldn't choose which was better between the two because they were equally delicious. I also had some Basque cheesecake and liked it, especially with the charcoal salt. And that's it for our trip. All we had to do now was make our way back home. We bought some souvenirs to take with us, including the little dinosaur gyoza I had gushed about in the day six video, and took a couple of trains to get back to Shibuya. So for our last day, day six, we spent 10,620 yen for the both of us. Most of it for gyoza. <laughs> I can't tell you whether or not I love this winter trip more than the summer trip. Both were equally amazing and were totally different experiences. I 10 out of 10 would recommend doing both. So for our whole trip, including the Hokkaido and East Japan local trains pass, 
we spent around 164,500 yen for two people, or 82,250 yen per person. Woo! So that was it, you guys. That was how much we spent for the entire six-day trip. What do you guys think? Was it expensive? Was it inexpensive for the whole six-day trip? Let me know in the comments down below. And also let me know if you want or if you are willing to take this same trip in the future. If you want to do the summer train travel series that we did more or if you want to do the winter travel series that we did more. I really want to know what you guys think and what you guys want to see also for the future videos. Yeah. Oh, and also I will leave another infographic in the description box down below of all the trains that we took throughout the entire trip in case you want to do the same route that we did. But I will only be putting the local trains. I won't be putting the Shinkansen anymore because that was a that was a cheat. <laughs> so yeah, like always, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, click like down below. And if you want to see more content about Japan, you know what to do. So until next time, Janet and see you in the next video.